Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening. Welcome to the sixth edition of the FITI Expert View Series. This Friday, we have Mr. Sanjay Sanchetti uh, with us. We extend a very warm welcome to you, Sanjay. Mr. Sacheti is the country manager and executive director at Olam Agro India Private Limited, and he also co-chairs the FIKI's Agriculture Committee. He took charge of Olam's India country operations in the year 2003 or 4, when it was a fledgling uh, commodity trader with interests in cashew and coffee trading and processing, focused in the southern states, obviously of Kerala and Tamil Nadu for cashews and coffee. Uh, over the last decade, he has successfully shared this business across multiple product categories uh, beyond cashew into peanuts, almonds, spices, cotton, sugar, rice, coca, and edible oils. And beyond uh, Kerala and Tamil Nadu, across the length and breadth of the country with operation in more than 10 states, a truly commendable effort. He has also championed various sustainability issues, particularly focused on enhancing farm productivity farmer livelihood, energy efficiency, and water efficiency, all key things uh, for the prosperity of the farmer and the agriculture sector going forward. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, enhancing India's agricultural exports has been identified as a key lever for increasing farmer incomes. Towards this, the government has undertaken several steps to address key constraints around supply chain and to build efficiencies that would drive growth in exports. The government has also announced a comprehensive agricultural export policy, keeping the focus on the agricultural export-oriented production, agro-promotion, and better farmer real realization. We also understand that the agricultural export policy has set, set a target of achieving a 60 billion US dollar exports by 2022 and a hundred billion dollars over the next few years. Agricultural trade is expected to continue to play a significant role in the coming years, and there's a huge potential that India can tap into. Uh, Mr. Sanchetti, given your rich experience uh, in this sector, it would be great to hear your views on what India's strategy should be to make this US $100 billion agricultural export target a reality, and also creating an opportunity for many uh, companies who are not necessarily in the agricultural sector to look at business diversification and contribute to farmer well-being and livelihood. Uh, thank you for joining us and thank you very importantly for agreeing to share your expert views. And may I now hand over the floor to you, Mr. Sacheti. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chenoy. Uh, thank you for your kind words. Uh, uh, a very warm welcome and good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as part of this session. And it's my pleasure, absolute pleasure and uh, privilege to be here. Uh, agriculture and agricultural exports is uh, what I've been associated with over the last 20, 25 years. And this is an area of uh, focus and passion for me. I, uh, I sincerely believe that uh, we have done well over the last uh, decade. And there is a lot of uh, still further scope, unrealized potential, which India has uh, on the current journey towards increasing uh, its uh, overall agricultural exports. Agriculture, as you see, uh, as you would have observed, has emerged as one of the most resilient sectors of the Indian economy over the last couple of years when we have uh, faced this unprecedented pandemic. All, also, over the last uh, decade, uh, our uh, agricultural export production has grown uh, at a very healthy pace. And uh, when we look at uh, the data over the last decade, we find that production in a large country, uh, a populous country like ours, is still outpacing growth in consumption. And this is leading to large surpluses in various commodity value chains. And uh, this is while... Uh, uh, you know, people who uh, come uh, with uh, with the whole uh, food security related issues in mind of the 60s and 70s. It's a matter of great pride for all of us that we are in this state after a lot of hard work and sustained effort. But at the same time, this is also a cause of concern in some ways for us, because now we are continuing to throw up large surpluses 
which ought to be uh, absorbed by which ought to be absorbed by uh, by by the global markets however at the same time what we find is that our agricultural system is not completely aligned with global uh, market uh, trends and uh, expectations and requirements this is where uh, a lot of work uh, needs to be done given this kind of a background exports are an imperative it's it's not a residual strategy for uh, the indian agricultural ecosystem it's a necessity it is a necessity from the point of view of increasing farmer livelihoods it is a necessity from the point of view of uh, surplus management and also in a in a country which continuously regularly uh, generates a current account deficit uh forex earnings which would come from this source are uh, are also a necessity so given this background uh, and also the fact that uh, india has some of the best endowments which any country on this planet has from the point of view of a uh, of a very successful uh, agricultural ecosystem uh it is imperative that uh, we continue to uh, continue to grow our agricultural exports and be one of the top 3 or 4 agricultural exporters uh in the world right now we are at the 11th uh, position our exports uh, in 2020 were 42 million dollars they have hovered between 36 to 40 million dollars over a good part of the last decade but we have ambitions of growing it to 100 billion dollars mind you 100 billion dollars today uh, as we speak there are only two countries in the world uh, which clock uh, that kind of a, a number as far as their agricultural exports are concerned it is us and very paradoxically uh, netherlands which is a very small country probably even smaller than the state of kerala Uh, which uh, which clock uh, these uh, these these the magical number of hundred billion dollars. Now, when we analyze the next four or five countries, also we find that a good part of agricultural exports of these countries are extremely value added, branded, and they capture a very high value on a per unit basis for their exports. There are obviously there are large countries like U.S. canada canada brazil and china also in uh, in that list and uh, they do uh, throw up large commodity surpluses which are very very commoditized rather than uh, differentiated or high value but uh, they are very extremely efficient uh, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, their agricultural productivity so india if it has to uh, it has to grow Uh, its exports from the current 40 42 billion dollars or maybe the 50 billion dollar mark which we uh, expect in a in a in a, a bullish scenario of 2021 uh, we we need a two pronged strategy one is to maximize output given the endowments 150 million hectares of land under uh, cultivation which is the second largest anywhere in the world despite we not being the uh, the top uh, we not being among the top 5 largest nations in the world we have the second largest arable area uh, in the world so that is a very strong rich endowment secondly we have got 120 million farmers uh, farmer households which are engaged in uh, farming activity hardly there is any other country not even china which has so many farming uh, households so let's say about 600 uh, million uh, people 120 million uh, farmer households third is the availability of water the river systems the agroclimatic conditions the soil the richness of the soil in this country uh, which allows us to be a very diverse uh, producer of uh, agro commodities so with these kind of endowments it is important and if there is any country in the world which should be hitting 100 billion dollars of agri exports it should be us however this problem has to be looked at from uh, two lens this target this problem statement has to be looked at from two lens one is from the point of view of maximizing production which means agricultural productivity wastages efficiencies uh, the throughput efficiencies have to be maximized on the other side 
how do we bring richness in our exports which means how do we have differentiated produce being offered which will have a very high level of uh, per unit realization how do we process uh, process a good part of our exports which means value added exports and three how do we bring the innovation quotient uh, into play with with innovative products which are in line with the emerging uh, consumption trends all across the country if you were to look at uh, places like france belgium uh, netherlands uh, these kind of countries which are still despite being very small countries much smaller than india uh, they are they are uh, they have exports which are more than double indian exports and this is because they realize maximum value per acre of farmland uh, under uh, cultivation so this is th this they do by uh, by by enriching the uh, the product mix which comes out of their farmlands processing it and producing products which are very value added and very importantly which are branded to uh, to maximize uh, uh, maximize the uh, value uh, coming out of uh, uh, these exports now moving on to the challenges which we have uh, towards achieving what i just said the target of 100 billion dollars maximizing productivity and uh, at the same time maximizing value capture per unit of exports per unit uh, per uh, uh, unit of volume of exports we've got a, a farming ecosystem which is uh, which is uh, um, which is based on small holder farmers the average land holding per farmer is less than 1.5 acres uh, 1.5 hectares and that impacts productivity that impacts access to factors of production as well as economies of scale which farmers in brazil which uh, farmers in uh, us or canada or uh, some of the other larger countries like russia uh, enjoy so these uh, these are the disadvantages which you have and that also brings in disadvantages in terms of quality and cost efficiencies throughout the value chain because this fragmented farmer base is not very well connected to the markets so their ability to produce the quality which the markets require the for the market signals to travel back uh, to this fragmented uh, farmer base is that much more difficult and this this uh, this leads to uh, quality of produce uh, being churned out out of our farmlands which are not in line with the market so while you may have a surplus but there are no takers anywhere in the global markets similarly there are cost inefficiencies in logistics in uh, uh, in processing because uh, on the sitting on the base of such fragmented uh, uh, farmer base everything else beyond that including our uh, msme based uh, food processing sector is not as efficient as it is in some of the leading uh, exporter countries we uh, we also have a challenge of uh, of uh, uh, attracting investment in uh, export oriented in uh, export oriented uh, uh, food processing sector so today uh, most of the investments which have gone in are into primary processing of various commodities uh, be it rice milling be it cotton ginning oil milling these are not export oriented uh, investments or export oriented activities this leads to uh, production of uh, commodities or pro uh, lightly processed uh, commodities which are not really fit for uh, exports or would get the base value on a per unit basis for the production also the, the other problem which i would like to touch upon is uh, the policies and regulations which are very uh, production oriented but are not necessarily uh, export oriented so the way uh, we we uh, deal with the stock limits the way we deal with uh, contracts on the commodity exchanges the way we manage uh, uh, manage the subsidies for exports these are all policies which actually hinder export uh, competitiveness rather than uh, promoting it in a big way we have the issue with meis the withdrawal of meis the delay in uh, in in uh, uh, coming out with the rot tap scheme the inadequacy of these uh, subsidies or uh, fiscal support measures compared to so many other countries where due to 
uh, our inability to manage the WTO regulations or make uh, these schemes compatible with uh, with WTO, uh, we are not able to support our exporters and the whole agricultural ecosystem to be uh, adequately competitive in the global markets. The next uh, problem which I would like to talk about is the market access. Uh, our the uh, the ability of Indian exporters to access a lot of markets, overcome tariff and non-tariff barriers uh, which are there, is uh, is is very well understood by uh, by players in the industry. Uh, we India does is not the most well positioned country as far as having trade packs, beneficial trade packs with large importers of agricultural products, and that is where. Compared to countries like Bangladesh, Vietnam, Mexico, Chile, uh, China, or even Brazil, uh, we are at a severe disadvantage. E in, with the European Union, we have no FTA. Uh, similarly, with uh, with uh, with the uh, US, uh, the uh, the GSP uh, scheme is uh, is not operational now, and we are not a we do not have any preferential treatment uh, with a large consuming market. There are multiple tariff and non-tariff barriers which we have in markets like uh, China. So unless and until we overcome this very important barrier, uh, while we will produce more, but that produce will not be competitive in the global markets. Last but not the least, I would like to talk about a lack of effort which goes at the uh, at the level of the private sector or at the level of uh, various exporters in branding and marketing of indian produce just to give you an example india has 300 more than 300 gi uh, recognized uh, re uh, agricultural products coming out uh, of this country but except for let's say darjeeling tea or um, the basmati rice you hardly see any marketing effort uh, being uh, carried out by various stakeholders in the ecosystem to uh, to promote uh, these products and their uniqueness and points of differentiation and uh, superior value to the uh, to the consuming markets so while there are a multitude of uh, you know um, hindrances and challenges but i would like to talk about these five six cases the smallholder uh, farmers how do we overcome the, uh, the, the, the lack of efficiencies there, the investment in export-oriented infrastructure and uh, processing uh, capacities, the regulatory environment and uh, the way it uh, supports the exporters, the market access issue, and the branding and marketing effort which needs to go in uh, to be able to realize the ambition of uh, 100 billion of uh, agricultural exports. Because... If from the current 40 to 50 billion dollars of exports, if you have to move to 100 billion, our estimate is, and uh, I must share with you that uh, Fiki, along with Yes Bank, had done a detailed study of uh, Indian exports, and uh, we realized that the commodity exports, with productivity, with uh, certain other, uh, you know, with better market access, probably can grow by another 15 to 20 billion dollars. But that also is very uncertain because rest of the world is competing. They also have their plans and competitive responses to uh, to to uh, counter any measures which we might take to uh, increase these exports. So that is where we are probably uh, we are we do not really have a very high level of uncertainty in growing the commodity end of the exports. The exports which have to grow are the value-added and the differentiated uh, products-oriented exports. So this is where I think uh, right from, uh, uh, from the, far the farming system where better uh, farm uh, market linkages, uh, investment in extension services, image in, uh, investment in commodity-specific clusters, uh, for uh, growing various uh, crops, uh, commodity-specific innovation, commodity-specific uh, uh, export forums, which need to be put in place to uh, to overcome the problem of uh, of uh, the lack of uh, um, farm market linkages. We need to take multiple steps there to strengthen uh, one the farming system and its productivity. Second is to link up these uh, the farming system to the export markets very effectively. 
at the farming uh, at the farming end i think it is it is about uh, investment in uh, in an irrigation infrastructure which has been lagging uh, over the last uh, uh, last 7 to 8 years or maybe 10 years i think which needs to be looked into the investments which have to go into post harvest infrastructure in terms of storage in terms of uh, processing of commodities uh, which is another area uh, where we have to uh, where we have to focus the other part which is very important and which uh, we somehow uh, sometimes tend to overlook is the water use efficiency of agriculture in india we are heading for uh, a, a major problem there over the next 7 to 8 years already what has happened in the last uh, 15 days in uttarakhand in uh, uh, in himachal in kerala the kind of unseasonal rains and the climate events which are impacting us are are playing uh, havoc with our uh, agricultural systems and this is happening with greater frequency and across the country so how do you manage water uh, water water very efficiently uh is also very important for the long term sustenance of the agricultural system there so that is where a lot of focus has to uh, has to go into harnessing the water resources and also making agriculture efficient in terms of water usage the other part which i would like to say is that uh, you know how do you link how do you make farmers more responsive to markets and that is where farmer collectives the whole fpo movement is very very important so one is for generally making uh, uh, the uh, the farming system efficient two how do you make it export oriented so that that's where the role of export oriented fpos uh, comes into play and i would uh, very uh, strongly advocate uh, all uh, the need for efforts to uh, propagate develop and grow export oriented fpos in the right clusters which are export oriented clusters for various commodities this is extremely important for orienting our uh, our agricultural system towards markets and very effectively linking farmers with uh, large uh, exporters uh, large exporters and uh, buyers of uh, agri produce for the export market so this is something which uh, we we should definitely look at i would also say that there has to be a lot of consistency in uh, in our uh, fiscal benefits which are for the export market uh, right now if you look at meis the way it is being administered it is very very patchy and very unpredictable for the export uh, community we are not able to realize the meis benefit and even if you realize the meis scripts Uh, the liquidation of the meis scripts is under a cloud i do hope that with the introduction of rot tap uh, these kind of uncertainties uh, go away and we have a more predictable system where we are uh, the export uh, sector is able to realize uh, the benefits in a timely and uh, predictable manner because that is extremely important to uh, for india to be uh, competitive in its offerings Uh, exporters completely factor in these uh, benefits while ex- uh, while uh, quoting their uh, prices in the global market but unless and until this part is predictable all their calculations go awry and make them uncertain and uh, and and make them uh, uh, make them uncompetitive also so this is something which uh, which uh, the, uh, the the right stakeholders have to look at the other part is that uh, how does the private sector play a role in uh, in in, uh, in uh, collaborating with uh, research and uh, the lab to lab to market kind of linkage which is so important for various commodities uh, which are currently being produced in a form which is not compatible with the market requirements how do you how do you bridge that and secondly uh, how do Uh, uh how do uh, private sector um uh, make investments in uh, in in uh, f- in improving farm acti- uh, farm productivity by linking up with the farmers how do they uh, um, invest in uh, processing capacities and that's where uh, uh, you know some of these policies like pli uh, pli and rotep and um, uh, 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 rotep and the uh, export and the uh, processing subsidies 
which the government gives uh, come into play because that is what uh, provides uh, the required support for these uh, players to be able to invest in the processing capacity which is uh, more export oriented so the government has to uh, look at uh, look at schemes like pli and make them more exporter friendly uh, so that in more investments come into the country we uh, for each of the commodity value chains for each of the product uh, categories we are able to attract the largest players largest the most competitive and the most well connected players for the indian uh, indian agricultural system unless and until we get these leading players into uh, into the uh, indian uh, indian processing system we will not see the multiplier effect of uh, of such investments and the benefits which would flow through to across the value chain right all the way till the farmers imagine any large investment which comes into let's say a food processing industry or in the marine industry it has a huge multiplier effect and a ripple effect across the value chain and it lifts all the ecosystem players so be it farmers their capability development the logistics players the the infrastructure players the uh, the labs and the quality testing uh, you know e uh, ecosystem uh, which is so important for exports and the kind of infrastructure you need at the ports with such large players coming into play you have that impact all across the value chain and what india needs to do is to attract such players across a range of products and uh, and and commodity value chains this is something which is lacking really lacking uh, in any of our uh, uh, large sectors barring uh, a few sectors like uh, let's say a coffee to a certain extent marine products we really do not see large foreign investments coming in from leading players of the industry and which would have a completely uh, transfer transformative impact on the export ecosystem there the other part is uh, you know how do you uh, how do you give the right incentives for branding and marketing uh, for the global uh, for uh, global marketing so how are private uh, players uh, supported uh, and and i do see that there is some uh, effort which has gone uh, by introducing these benefits under the pli scheme for uh, the food processing sector so similar benefits have to be thought through and given all across uh, uh, across various uh, commodities uh, and that that is something which will uh, propagate all efforts to uh, brand and market the indian produce all across uh, the global markets and this is something which can really have a, a huge impact on how the exports grow from 50 million uh, 50 billion dollars and how the processed foods processed and branded food uh, food products uh, as a percentage of total exports grow significantly right now by apida's estimates uh, i think the processed products export out of india uh, is probably uh, not more than 15% uh, of our total exports so let's say in the range of about 6 to 8 billion dollars that is pretty insignificant for a country which has aspirations of growing uh, exports to 100 billion dollars and as i mentioned today there are only two countries uh, which are there uh, in that league and all both the countries have a large part of their exports are not commodity exports but value added branded exports so with this uh, uh, i will uh, hand over uh, uh, the session back to uh, mr chenoy for his uh, closing remarks but i would say that it has to be a two pronged strategy first is maximizing the surpluses how do we improve agricultural productivity to uh, throw even bigger surpluses all across uh, our agricultural system and two how do we enrich the profile of exports by innovation by uh, branding and marketing and by higher uh, value added uh, processing thank you each one of you will agree that this was a very informative and interesting session thank you mr sacheti for sharing your perspective and for enlightening us on the opportunities ahead india has certainly a long road to cover in our, as our value chains are not yet aligned with the global value chains and it remains critical to address the challenges in a holistic way 
but you have shared some insights and experiences that would enable firms to do so. Also, you correctly pointed out that an action-oriented and a time-bound approach will be important to achieve tangible results. Moreover, as the agriculture is a concurrent uh, subject, uh, we need convergence of efforts of the central government, its agencies, state governments, and the private sector uh, to ensure that we achieve this target. So it has to be a real public-private initiative and cutting across all state boundaries. With these words, I would like to thank you for your time today and for taking the effort to appraise our membership about the vision of the government, which can be a game changer for India's agricultural sector. I would also like to thank each one of you who's joined this session, and we hope that it has actually given you insights that you can promote the agricultural sector in India and diversify your businesses uh, and also grow your businesses in the sector. Thank you, keep well and stay safe.